lovely. Hi, I'm Gary from learntoplaymusic.com and welcome to the music space. Today my special guest is John Delaney, he's an Adelaide guitarist and uh, also a student of music technology. Also today in the studio I have a co-host, Sarah. Say hi, hi Sarah. Say hi John. Hi John. John. So John, uh, the, the topic of the day is um, hybrid picking. Can you tell us a bit about that? And for those that are watching, uh, don't forget your Q&A apps and your headphones, and uh, you can ask some questions on the blog. So John, the hybrid picking thing, can you tell us about it? Sure. Um, hybrid picking is essentially um, when you play with a regular plectrum, such as this one I've got here, and also using your other fingers to pick the strings. So uh, it gives you great versatility. Um, it doesn't mean that you have to put the pick down in order to play finger picking. Um, it means you can go straight from strumming chords into finger picking. Like so, and into lead playing as well. So it's very versatile and you can play the style on the electric and the acoustic guitar just fine. It looks like it might be difficult to get coordination happening during the pick. Can you sure. your fingers? Do you have any tips sure. for exercises for your fingers? Sure, yes. Um, actually, one thing that I used to do and still do is play chord sequences um, and arpeggiate the chords. Um, but before I do that, I'll play two notes at the same time. So I'll play, uh, for example, a regular C chord. Mm -hmm. And I'll play the bass note of the chord and the top note of the chord at the same time with my uh, third finger in the right hand. So, and you might do that for a sequence of chords, like so. And then I'll fill that chord out with some notes in between, which is uh, like the chord notes themselves. And um, there's no strict kind of approach to it. So sometimes I'll play um, the first few notes and finish the last note with that third finger. Like so. And I might do an exercise such as this one. But you could experiment and use the finger more than the That's right. Work. Yeah, and I would recommend listening to some simple finger picking music um, and then trying to um, work out what the chords are to that piece and try to play the melody with the chords at the same time. It involves uh, listening very carefully to what's going on and um, working through it very slowly. So you might have a melody such as this one. Okay, so that's the idea. And um, this particular style um, is very uh, adaptable to a lot of different styles. You can use it in the context of uh, picking ballads like I'm doing here or in the context of improvisation as well, for example. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So what uh, styles of music does this lend itself to? Um, I would say, um, I mean, it's fantastic for um, when you're playing uh, ballads like I've just been playing then. Um, so yeah. few, like I've played a few weddings in the time and um, just playing background music and, and quiet, you know, um, music that people can listen to without having to um, focus on too much. It's really enjoyable to listen to. Yeah. Um, but a lot of rock guitarists use it too. Um, you know, just being able to get that tightness um, when you're playing a chord, like a... <laughs> being able to pick all the notes at the same time that you wouldn't yeah. be able to do through strumming them. Um, so probably the leading um, exponent of this style of hybrid picking would be the Australian guitarist, Tommy Emanuel. Yeah. Um, and that's where I learnt a lot of my ideas from. 
Um, but also Chet Atkins is a very well-known guitarist that utilizes this style. And in terms of electric guitar players, um, I'm thinking the Australian guitarist Brett Garcia, who's a session player. Um, he's a great improviser. He also uses that style in great power as well, yeah. like a jazz fusion type guitar player. Cool. So yeah. these guys all inspired you to pick up my particular sure. music yeah. styles. But uh, where did you start with guitar in general? Sure. Um, well, I needed to learn an instrument when I was in primary school. That we were we had to play either recorder or guitar. <laughs> so um, I did play recorder for a year, um, and I never really had a great interest in playing guitar. But um, I switched to the guitar because I was really tired of the recorder. And I found that I really enjoyed the feel of the instrument when I play it, um, the beautiful sound you can get from it, um, and just the versatility that it provides with the kinds of music you can play on the guitar. So um, that really, for me, I started listening to a lot of guitar music because I wanted to hear the instrument played really well. Mm. Um, and that, for me, inspired me to continue pursuing the guitar. And so I had a number of guitar teachers over the years, and um, eventually I um, went to university to study uh, a music degree, but that was majoring in music technology at that stage. So how does music technology differ to a standard music de uh, degree? Okay. Um, well, standard music degree is still there with music technology, but music technology is the specialisation. So you still have to study the um, core theory subjects um, the oral training that you need to go through, uh, history as well, and that's um, they're all the core subjects that we do. And then on top of that, we specialise in the field of technology. So that might involve um, writing applications for computers, um, such as um, synthesizer applications, and also uh, there's a component of audio recording there where you record bands, you produce bands. Um, so it's it's fairly eclectic. It sounds very yeah. varied. Yeah. So what kind of benefits do you get from that over just a standard course? Like what kind of career options would you give you in? Sure. Um, a lot of different options, actually. Um, if you're interested in film sound, for example, uh, getting into um, music composition or sound design or foley work, um, it will set you up really well to understand um, how that works in terms of uh, not only musically, but the expectations that producers and engineers might have, um, asset management, uh, file management, things like that. Yes. Um, but also uh, game sound and game audio. Um, and if you're interested in teaching as well. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and also so John, live sound production. So um, oral training, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, all training is incredibly important. Um, it helps you, um, to, personally, it's helped me um, with regard to uh, transcribing music quite a lot. So knowing your intervals, knowing your chords, especially um, you know, if you're listening to a piece of music and you want to know the key of the music, the tonality, yeah. um, and especially if you want to learn guitar, in my case, uh, maybe a guitar solo or um, something like that. Having good oral skills really helps. And that, that comes back to what you said earlier in terms mm -hmm. of hybrid picking. You said you should listen to a song that you like and break it down. So that oral training will help there. Absolutely, yeah. yes. Yep. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, we, we were drilled um, <laughs> in our oral training, and, and sometimes that's just the best way to learn, just keep up it. It makes it a lot easier, particularly in my, in my work as well. Trying to listen for um, mistakes in, in various um, recordings that I proof through the course of my work as well. Yeah. Now you work with Learn to Play Music as well. Sure. So what kind of work have you done with Learn to Play Music, and how has your degree helped? Sure. Um, well, my involvement with Learn to Play Music is um, in media proofing, which is fairly broad. So um, that involves anything from proofing raw video footage that we've produced of an instrumentalist playing one of our books to uh, audio mixes and uh, more recently ebook production. So I might be proofing scores, making sure that they match the master copies and that the text of the ebooks and any other assets is also correct as well. Yeah. Yeah. So making sure everything's correct before it gets sent out. Ideally, yes. Yeah. 
Cool. Mm. So Sarah, you're you're part of the uh, Learn to Play music team as well. Yes. Is that right? Yep, I've <laughs> been here for a cool. few years. Uh, yep. I've done a lot of varied stuff here. So photography, marketing, um, helping manage the team. Yeah, so that's my role at LTP. And John, what, what's your main role in the, in the company? Well, uh, my main role comes under the umbrella of media proofing, which is pretty broad. Um, and um, yeah, as I mentioned, it's uh, proofing uh, audio and video media that we produce, as well as um, assets that we use in our ebooks at the moment, primarily. Yep. And so, um, um, you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your music musical uh, uh, tech uh, specialisation, uh, building synth synthesizer applications with Max MSP and Super Collider. What is that? <laughs> okay, um, Max MSP is an application which allows you to build your own custom uh, synthesizers and patches and so forth. You can you can control devices remotely using what we call MIDI, um, and uh, you can also generate your own audio from within the application. And it's extremely flexible in that it gives you a graphical interface where you can arrange uh, objects that you create and um, it's, it's quite deep, so a simple explanation would be that you can create your own custom uh, objects which can process sound in certain ways and control, send control data in certain ways to other devices. Yeah. And you can um, create um, yeah, any number of um, ways to control instruments using this graphical system and yeah. you can export that as an application. <laughs> um, Super Collider takes that to another level uh, because you're just working with code. And it uses it, and the programming language itself is called SuperCollider, which is derivative of Apple Small Talk. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds very technical and <laughs> mathematical and scientific. Is that? Um, it it is. It gives you an insight into how things really work at the core level. Um, but it's very cool too. It's um with SuperCollider, I did a live performance with that, and you can change the code in real time. So you, essentially, it was live coding. You change the parameters of your uh, creating musically in so real time. So how did that work live? What were the benefits of this? Um, and what was the show? Yeah, um, one of the, I guess, the downsides to to using technology like this at this point is that um, as a show, uh, what you're seeing live is typically just a person behind a computer. <laughs> so it's, it's up to how creative we want to get in terms of how we're going to present a live electronic music show. Um, so I'll be sitting behind the computer manipulating the code. Um, but we may want to project some kind of um, graphical information on the screen, mm. something to try to involve the audience in that respect. Yeah, so this is that. It's quite new um, type of music that's it come is. out. It's really popular at the moment. Um, kind of band music. Um, yeah, so that's what you use it for. You use it to create digital music live. Mm. Taking things a step further. Mm. Cool. Yeah. So, so John, back to the hybrid picking. Sure. What, what's a good way? What, how would you recommend getting started with the hybrid picking for someone watching? Um, I would recommend um, finding some guitar music um, that that one likes and listen to it very carefully and work out what the chords are if you can. Um, and then um, once you've worked out the chords, often you'll find that the melody sits quite nicely around those chords. Um, and I guess I also um, I, I, I observed the technique of hybrid picking by watching some instructional guitar videos because I didn't actually have a guitar teacher show me how to do it. Um, so yeah, getting back to Tommy Emanuel again, um, one of his videos called Up Close is a fantastic resource for learning hybrid picking and just yeah. seeing how that works. Um, and um, essentially it, it's um, there, there are no hard and fast rules. So you yeah. just want to uh, try to incorporate your fingers at, with using a pick at the same time. For example, the first pink picking piece I ever learnt was Blackbird and I played it without the pick. So I just played, you know, the intro like that. Mm -hmm. um, 
And so you might want to try doing that with a pick as well. And it's going to feel quite different, but yeah. that will get you used to using that uh, pick and playing that style. And then the benefits yeah. of that are you have the pick in your hand and you can use it to go mm. into other styles of just drumming with lead. Exactly right. Yeah. Cool. But I, I always wanted to have that versatility. I didn't want to have to be locked into using a thumb pick yeah. or um, that kind of thing. And obviously there's a compromise somewhere, but there's a compromise with with every kind of technique you might want to use. Yeah, so saying the best way to get started is to have an interest in it, see what other people are doing and how they use it, and then just give it a go yourself and just practice. Sure. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So there are limitations maybe, uh, yeah. to this style. Hmm. Maybe a Learn to Play Music uh, book would cover some yeah. of the basics that sure. you were talking about initially, John. So you're holding the pick between your thumb and your forefinger, is that correct? Yeah, just the regular yeah. way, that's right. Yeah. And then using your second and third fingers to, exactly. to pick mainly, mainly the treble strings? That's right, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a, maybe one, just one simple exercise you can show us? Do you do um, alternate pick, picking with, your, with the pick? Uh, yes, I still do alternate picking as well. Um, so thumb, although, thumb picking. Yeah, when I'm playing um, slower pieces, I tend to just do downstrokes anyway. Um, this might be a, a place to start as well. Um, for example, you might want to pick a bass note, and then the two uh, notes from the rest of the chord. This is an A minor chord. And just alternate those two bass notes. When you're comfortable with that, you might want to start to add some variation to your life. And you can speed that up a little as well. So I'm just using the pick here. So if I keep that tempo, I might want to do something like this. So I hope that helps. Yeah. So, yes. so that's very yeah. folky country sort of style. Yeah. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Start yeah. simple, start slow, and when you're comfortable and you can play it several times without making a mistake, then maybe add a variation in or try and pick your tempo up. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Cool. It's a, it's a, it looks like a good technique for a singer songwriter too. Absolutely. That style of, of guitar playing. That's right, because especially when you're using the plectrum, you get the volume that you need as well. And I think that's, that's been a big reason why I've wanted to use this style too. Yeah. Um, um, do we have any questions, Ben? Uh, we have a couple of emails that have come through. Um, the first one's an email from Michael. Uh, is there any particular guitar to play with hybrid picking, John? Um, not particularly, no. You, you can play this particular style on any guitar that you choose, uh, as long as you're comfortable with the guitar itself. Yeah. yeah. So you mentioned that you can use uh, um, rock guitarists use it. So you could even play on an yeah. electric guitar. Yeah, on an electric guitar, steel string such as this one, or a nylon string classical guitar. Yeah. Um, they all work well with this style. It's yeah. very versatile. So the guitar you choose would come down to what you're personally comfortable with and the end style that you're aiming for. Indeed, and yes. hybrid picking is just one of the techniques that helps you get. Yes, that's right. Yes. Yeah. Sure. I mean, when I when I started this style, I wanted to be able to play, you know, any kind of guitar without having to have specialised picks or yeah. tuning and things like that. I just wanted to be able to play standard. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Standard setup guitars and, and, and with just regular pick, but be able to make as much music as I could with that. So, yeah. so, so yeah. versatility again, versatility yeah. for playing styles, versatility for the guitar you can use. Cool. And that'll work with any guitar, electric, acoustic, also with uh, any string instrument, really. Mm. So, yeah, you yeah, could go for ukulele, banjo. That's right. It's a technique that can be applied across the board. Mm. Any more Very questions, Ben? 
Um, we have an email from Edgar. Um, was there a specific ambition you had in music that only a higher education could have um, Yeah. Um, I, well, I um, started out doing some guitar teaching several years ago, and um, I wanted to present myself in a more professional manner and um, and be able to have a degree behind me so that um, you know I could be aware of um, different approaches to music pedagogy, which is also something I studied. Um, and so that was my goal, was to get the degree so that I could um, pursue music teaching and music education in that respect. Yeah. And have a firmer background in the more technical aspects of it. That's right. So a yes. better understanding so some better teach. People. Yes, that's right. I, I wanted to focus on music technology because it's a, it's um, very eclectic and diverse, and um, I didn't want to be locked into one particular thing such as jazz or classical. Yeah. So, so the degree you chose is similar to your favourite style of picking, goes very versatile. Lots of options. That's right. <laughs> cool. Yes. Do we have so any like more questions? Out of Sorry. So I was just going to say, making a living out of music isn't necessarily just being in a band or being famous or being a singer. Mm. No, there There's are other the, options. There are so many <laughs> layers to music that most people don't see. Yeah, yeah, because you're not currently in a band but you're still making a living on music. Yeah, through music publishing at present. Yeah. That's right. Um, that's right, and I do play regularly through um, in uh, Sunday mornings at church, for example. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I'm quite happy with what I do at the moment. And, uh, yeah, and I know of a couple of other people who've gone through similar degrees and they're making a living doing things like music composition or sound design or recording or foley, so it's, yeah, there are a lot of other jobs through mm. music, mm. through those degrees that you can get. That's right. And through the, studying music, they usually want to add something. Um, when, uh, when studying tech, you become much more aware of the um, scientific aspects of music and the analytical side, you know, how music works um, in terms of audio theory as well uh, and digital audio theory and so it gives you uh, more scope for being able to communicate with sound engineers and understand the challenges that they're facing in addition to the challenges that musicians face. Um, yeah. And so I think it helps with overall understanding of what people are trying to accomplish and be able to communicate with them more effectively. Too. And when you understand and communicate, you can really pull things apart and start creating new sounds, which is what's happening with the synthesizers. Yes, indeed. Yes. Um, we have a question come through from one of our uh, avid watchers, uh, Fred Math, who asks, do you practice uh, arpeggios with this style? Um, I play arpeggios a lot, just through the course of playing. So um, the styles that I demonstrated previously. Would arpeggios benefit um, the hybrid picking? Would it work as a technique to practice alongside it, it? It does, because often I'm playing the arpeggios um, mostly with the, the regular plectrum. So yeah. it will facilitate accuracy. Um, in picking the strings and doing string skipping perhaps as well. Yeah, could you give a yeah. demonstration? Um, yeah, I mean, um, a simple chord progression such as this one. Um, that's a common kind of technique where I'm not necessarily playing straight up and down arpeggios, but just picking the notes of the chords, yeah. uh, the notes that I like to pick, or which I think sounds yeah. nice, basically. But you could start playing yeah. standard, like you said, keep it simple, That's keep right. it slow, and then you've got that move on to mm. something different or faster. Mm. So. Starting yeah. simple patterns. Mm. We have uh, email, oh, an email come through from Simon as well that's uh, directed to Gary. Where is Gary today? <laughs> ah, it's a mystery. I'm, uh, I'm at Cockles. I was going to say sunny, sunny Port Elliot, but it's actually pouring with rain at the moment. I'm at the Cockles Cafe in Port Elliot, South Australia, and um, using the free Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I had a wonderful breakfast here. I can recommend Cockles Cafe, coffee and the food is terrific.
So there you go, Simon. Where's Simon? <laughs> and we have one more email from Nikki, uh, Secretary. Um, is university a good network, uh, networking opportunity? Absolutely, yes. In fact, um, when I think back to my university days, um, the one thing I would have focused on more was being aware that those students who were around me may potentially have been work colleagues in the future. And um, not to just take it for granted that you're just there and you're just studying. You know, these are people that could be very important in the future and, and uh, get to know them and um, work with them there and then and keep doing that. So university yeah. has a wide range of benefits. Mm. You, it, I guess it helps you on your musical journey, gives you a better understanding of the way music works, gets you involved with other people who have similar interests and yes. are hoping mm. to also make that their career. A yes, good absolutely. Environment. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely worth uh, the effort. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So, so that's John, everything. What What does the future hold for you, John, with guitar playing and music? Okay. Um, well, um, I'm actually quite keen to just record an acoustic album for myself, an instrumental album at some stage. That's definitely on the cards, and I've mm. been working on that at the moment. Um, and um, for the time being, I'm quite happy in, in my role with LTP, music publishing, um, yeah. and to continue playing guitar as I do. So um, I'm quite. Yeah, take happy it with as that. it comes. Yes. Do what interests you. Yes. Is that your original material, John, that you'd like to record? Um, uh, what I'd like to record is some original material, um, as in like improvised material, um, and also some covers of um, perhaps some older. And songs from the past. Cool. Any more questions, Ben? That's it. Cool. That's Thanks it. for tuning in today, Gary, from your holiday in Port Elliot. Oh, well, um, I love being part of the show, so any reason to still get linked up somehow. And uh, <laughs> that was great, 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 John, to, um, to hear what you're playing. Sounds wonderful. And um, hopefully that's inspired some people to to pick up and play the guitar, because the more guitarists in the world, the better, I think. Yeah. But, um, so perhaps, John, if you want to leave us with some sure. more hybrid picking. And um, I'm, I'm Gary, and also joining us today is Sarah from learntoplaymusic.com. Um, hope you enjoyed this uh, episode of The Music Space. And uh, at the same time, same place next week on The Music Space, we'll have another fantastic special guest. So signing out now. Thanks for tuning in. See you next week.